Hello, welcome to the Lately in JavaScript uh, podcast and God. And yet another struggle against Google and God. I don't, I'm not sure, but I hope you, we are winning against the difficulties. Every month there is a new difficulty. Let's see how this month comes out. And as always, from since uh, uh, a few months ago, I have here with me uh, Arthur Sossins, directly from Blackberry. Hello, Arthur. How are you doing? Well, I'm fine. It's a nice spring weather here, so I hope, I hope everyone is having a nice spring. Uh, yeah, for, yeah. for you, it's probably most similar to autumn or something like that, right? Uh, I'm not sure what I would call it, uh, but uh, I can tell that it's not as hot as it used to be like a, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, here in Brazil, uh, it, we just uh, are over uh, Carnival, so <laughs> the people here uh, after Carnival, they wish Happy New Year, because yeah. it's been... <laughs> Between Christmas and the Carnival, no, almost nobody wants to work. Well, actually, and the rest of the year, almost nobody <laughs> wants to work, but that's another story. <laughs> so, but here today we are to talk about um, JavaScript and uh, what has been happening in the latest months. So we have a, a, a selection of interesting uh, articles and topics to talk about uh, uh, that I have been looking at seems interesting. Um, let me start with the first one, on which we are going to comment about this article that talks about uh, the, uh, the, what would be the advantages of, you, of having um, use script, uh, use strict, sorry, in the in your scripts. Uh, to somehow uh, get some warnings, and um, uh, basically it starts the article here um, with a, um, just a, a brief tutorial where you should put a use strict expression expression in your um, in your code. You can put it uh, at the first line just to tell that the whole code uh, should be subject of uh, strict um, warnings and stuff, and uh, also inside functions. So it's pretty straightforward. There is nothing uh, uh, difficult to uh, about this uh, directive. So then it starts talking about uh, some benefits, like uh, um, uh, avoiding um, yeah, uh, mis stupid mistakes usually that like uh, having uh, duplicated keys in objects, um, declarations of variables in uh, without the var global uh, variables. Keyword. Yeah, and um, uh, other stupid <laughs> mistakes like uh, duplicating uh, the names of arguments in functions. Um, I don't think this is something that would happen a lot, but it can happen and you strict will, will detect it. And uh, let, me, let me, here then they have some comments and that's basically all this uh, article has to offer. Uh, Artus, have you looked into this article? What do, do, do you think, do you usually already use, use strict? Or maybe you are not so inclined to use it. Well, um, actually, I'll, I almost never use strict, uh, but not because uh, it it is bad or, or does something bad. But uh, well, it just I'm used to, and maybe it's some of my uh, practices or constructions that I'm used to uh, are not allowed with this uh, strict mode. But what right. I wanted to tell that basically it doesn't really matter if you use or, or do not use strict. The worst uh, thing you can do is mix the usage because, as the article dis explains, uh, declaring you strict uh, changes the behavior of some of the 
vari variable assignments and then and the order and something like that. So the worst case is, is if you use strict in development mode and then remo remove it in production, that could break lots of stuff there. Yeah. Uh, so if you are using strict, then keep using it in production mode and every time with the, this code. That That's basically the important thing that I think that should have been mentioned in, in this article. Right. Uh, actually, that was the conclusion that we, we reached um, uh, a few shows ago. I do not remember exactly when was it. I think it was a show on which um, Michael was Michael Kimsall was still presenting, and um, uh, basically that's that's uh, one concern that uh, you should have to not uh, use just it in in development and then switch in production, then you have different results. Uh, anyway, you mentioned that uh, you wouldn't use it because it uh, imposed some restrictions on the constructor that you use. What would be examples of uh, cons those constructs that you use? Well, can't remember from top of my head, but usually I use some kind of hacks to deal with uh, uh, you know, like class methods and static methods, and if you're creating a, a class like object like package, then you usually assign an instance to a class uh, to a static variable, and then use it and something like that. And it, it, something in this construction messed, uh, uh, did not work properly in the strict yeah. mode. But okay, yeah, it's, it might be not the the best, fastest, or most elegant. Uh, solution, but uh, I usually do not work on such uh, uh, classes that would need to be really, really efficient. I can cut cut me some slack in that, so that's probably my yeah. excuse. Right. It's interesting that uh, you wouldn't use it for something you are not sure anymore. <laughs> but, uh, probably there is a good reason uh, for not uh, not using it. Well, for me, uh, I also do not use use strict because um, it, it it changes uh, certain behaviors. And for these kinds of warnings, I would rather use some JS hint or JS link tool uh, that I, I put my code through, so it can uh, detect any issues that I might have and uh, did not notice. So. Uh, probably the effect that is mentioned on these articles is basically the same. And actually, I, I'm sure that JS hint and JS link actually give you more useful warnings rather than those that uh, this article covers. Okay, anyway, uh, now moving on to another topic, uh, another article here that is mentioning uh, um, uh, some uh, enhancements on the uh, V8 engine that is what uh, Chrome um, uses to to actually uh, uh, execute uh, um, uh, JavaScript code on the browser. Uh, it's basically uh, an engine that uh, I don't know if it was the first, but probably it was one of the first to actually compile uh, uh, JavaScript into That's native good. code. Yeah, and. Um, and now what uh, this announcement is explaining is that they will um, uh, do the, the compilation on the background rather than do it uh, uh, on time in demand or uh, right before it, uh, the code uh, that is being executed would be compiled. Um, so the, the idea here is that um, it will probably provide a smoother user experience since the, the, when the code is meant to be executed, it is already compiled uh, and uh, ready to run in memory uh, instead of waiting. I don't know if you probably noticed uh, much difference. I don't know. What do you think, uh, Art? Uh, yeah, well, that that's that it compiled the native code. That's uh, not such a new thing, but that it gets compiled in the another thread, not in the main thread. Uh, there, there should be 
it should be more efficient, but I don't know if many of us would really notice it. The only thing I could imagine it uh, would work well with if you are loading lots of JavaScript uh, as asynchronously, dynamically, you know, like for example how Google Analytics is loaded, and if there are lots and big chunk of code, uh, chunks of code, then maybe yeah. you would definitely notice the difference. But for a simple web page, probably not so much. Right. Well, uh, uh, I don't know, but um, the article here does not mention uh, 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 a specific version uh, on which uh, this uh, enhancement starts being used. Uh, I mean, uh, the Chrome browser, so we don't know yet if it is something that is already in the latest versions, or uh, do, do, we, do, we, do we need to upgrade uh, or wait for a newer version? Says this in the Chrome beta, so probably not really in the latest version that we have. But yeah, reading further, I also found that uh, it does, a, that does provide a concurrent code compilation, so it's, it seems if you are loading multiple JavaScript codes simultaneously, then it also would compile them sim simultaneously on different threads, so that could def yeah. definitely be more efficient. Yeah, well, uh, uh, personally, I, I only use uh, the stable ver versions of Chrome, so yeah. probably this will Not do yet at there. least two versions. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, delayed. Uh, compared to the version that probably this uses. I'm currently using Chrome 27, so I don't know, probably this is only available on Chrome 29 or Chrome 30. I don't know. This actually uh, could be a step further to the Chrome OS that, the, the, that was announced and probably maybe was released something. I don't follow that, but uh, I think in that context, uh, such engine could help a lot. Yeah, well, I don't know about uh, really about. You mean Chrome OS, right? Yeah. Well, Chrome OS is basically Linux um, with uh, Chrome and some a few programs that Chrome could not, uh, um, a browser could not run. Uh, uh, probably, uh, um, I don't know if Chrome OS will ever pick up because. People, most people use Windows and they do not want to switch. And uh, because there are many programs that on run on Windows, uh, there is there are other people that use uh, Macs and Linux distributions, uh, and uh, they do it because they have the, the the programs that they want to use. So I don't think that um, people are going to switch to Chrome OS for some reason. Actually, by the way, uh, 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 I think I never mentioned this, but uh, I got a Chrome a Chrome book from Google um, because I am part of some uh, initiative they have regarding some products that they have, and uh, I got a Chrome book, but uh, it's still in its case because I don't have much use for it. And uh, given that, I hope Google nobody from Google is listening. <laughs> But uh, that's how much I see Google Chrome OS being useful to the to the world. Uh, I don't know. It's I don't think they are they are getting why people are not using it. But okay, uh, uh, never mind. That's a different topic. Unrelated with JavaScript. Now back to the actual interesting JavaScript topic. Uh, let's move on with another topic. Here, basically, one uh, library called InstaClick that does something interesting, although I do not think it's that totally new, which is to anticipate the the eventual clicks that we you we will do on uh, web pages. Uh, for instance, if you have pages with links, if you hover a link, it uh, with even without clicking it, it already preloads the page. And this is uh, the purpose of this InstaClick library. Uh, it says it saves like 200 uh, to 300 milliseconds. 
I don't know if it is sufficient to be noticeable, probably for the user. Uh, you may notice a little improvement here and there. Um, but I also think there are some uh, um, uh, down, less interesting aspects. One is that if you preload a page, even if the user does not click it, because sometimes users are just uh, hovering the links to see where the pages go, but in the end they do not click it, well, probably you will be inflating your uh, page views uh, reports uh, without knowing uh, when, the, in reality, the user did not actually go to the page. And, well, maybe it's not a, a large enough number, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it will introduce some distortion in your statistics. Uh, I don't know, what do you think, uh, um, Arthur? Do you think this is libraries, uh, or at least its principle is useful enough to implement it? Have you tried it? Have you noticed uh, any differences? No, I actually, I actually tried it and I noticed uh, even their test result did not show much difference between sim simple click and you can you can you know you can uh, scroll up and uh, do the test there and uh, and it didn't uh, have much difference. Uh, but I was actually really interested how they implement that because at first I thought it was HTML5 prefetching, where you know you can provide in header the uh, next pages that user may come to, so the browser may preload them. S uh, and I actually checked their uh, GitHub code. Mm. Let me try to share it. I don't know. It, it seems to rely on HTML5 to state um, yes, specification. But what, what they actually do, it seems they are uh, doing uh, an oh, AJAX request. request. Yeah, yeah. And then they are parsing the response and uh, preloading uh, different assets and scripts. So what are there? So basically oh, using the downloading and, and Letting the browser to cache them, so. Uh, so it's, it's, it's basically a sort of a, a, um, uh, forcing the caching of uh, uh, elements uh, on the next page that the user eventually visits. Yes. yes, exactly. So, right, I see. Well, I don't know. This probably is a bit too far out. Um, concerning uh, the things that you can do to optimize your site. I don't know if it, uh, in the end, it's real, really worth um, it. Because, for example, when you go to a site, uh, if you vi visit a few pages, probably the images of icons and things that uh, CSS are mostly common to the current page that you are, are so probably it wouldn't be much in caching those uh, elements ahead because they are probably already cached. Um, exactly. Maybe it can gain some time if, for instance, you have uh, pictures, large pictures. If you preload those pictures, I think you can notice a good difference. But other than that, I'm not sure if it uh, will, is well worth it. So I think it depends. You would need to try it um, on your site. And maybe you can notice some. Uh, uh, games that are justified that they use of this uh, library or something similar. But other than that, I do not see uh, yeah. a great, really great uh, improvement. But I was, okay, actually, there are thinking, I was actually thinking yeah. about the downsides that could be uh, if you're using a mo mobile phone, there that uh, it could use up uh, more bandwidth TV that yeah. you actually did not visit the page yet. Right. But th then I remember then I think there is no hover option in the mobile phones, no? Sorry, I didn't get that last part. That uh, there is no hover option, like you know, you can hover a mouse over the link. And yeah. On mobile phones. I don't actually know. No, yeah, cool. you don't have for the over. <laughs> yeah. You can't, uh, it doesn't detect when you are hovering your finger. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, a good point. I, I, was, I was not uh, 
getting that uh, and um, well that, that, that's true at least for for mobile phones because they are operated with the, the finger but uh, my 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 the current notebook that I have uh, it has a, a stylus pen that uh, it actually uh, can uh, even if you don't click on the the Anywhere on the screen, it can move the, the mouse pointer. Okay. Uh, just uh, just reaching uh, the, the just uh, let me see if I can show you the, the actual stylus here. Well, I don't know if you can see it. Well, and if you go here, if you if you get well, you you won't see anything. But let me try to. Share some image. Uh, some, uh, well, I was in this article. Uh, do you see my mouse pointer? Yeah. Okay. If I, this is me uh, moving just the pen and just the style. Mm -hmm. So I'm not clicking on on anything. So at least with this stylus, it uh, there is some mouse over, or, or, there are mouse over events. But uh, as you mentioned, uh, with fingers, there 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 is not much hope <laughs> there. And, um, but uh, okay, anyway, probably the, a mobile environment. Uh, it's probably not the best environment to take advantage of this. Features because well at least here in Brazil the 3G connections suck and suck big time. Well, if you are on a Wi-Fi network that is fine because Wi-Fi networks are fit, but uh, wireless uh, 3G or even 4G connections where they are available are often are not very reliable, so you wouldn't have a great advantage. Uh, anyway, moving on with uh, the Hangout now, talking about uh, a new tool that uh, it is interesting that I noticed that um, it can be useful for those that are curious about what will be um, uh, JavaScript 6. Actually, the, the accurate name is ECMAScript 6. So this is one of those uh, uh, fiddle-like sites and um, that lets you Try some 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 code and see how how it works. For instance, the, I have here some examples error functions. You can run it and can see the results here. You, um, can you increase the font a little more? Yes, I tried to increase, but then the console is shifted below, <laughs> and then you do not okay. see the results. Sorry. That's that's the pro. That's why I reduced it. But well, okay. Well, this is just a, a curiosity for those that are so excited about uh, JavaScript six. And if um, you look at classes inheritance uh, example, you will be excited too. Yeah, because this looks more like a real classes that uh, you we use on exactly. other languages. And they have um, instructors that can extend classes. That, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah. And once people start using uh, JavaScript 6 uh, and uh, uh, create code classes with uh, these constructs, from then on, I no longer have to call those packages objects rather yeah. than classes. And that's the only difference that I will see. But um, uh, well, I, actually, I think whoever is uh, working with JavaScript for 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 a while, uh, is, is already is already used to the um, the, the prototype like uh, uh, type of programming, uh, creating objects in JavaScript. So uh, the only difference is really for those that prefer the syntax uh, that is more similar to other languages like uh, Java or even PHP and other that. Yeah, are also used for web development. Well, uh, and uh, 
I think that, that that's it. I don't know if you found anything else interesting with this uh, library that you wanted to comment. I mean, uh, site uh, Jess Phil J. Sorry, no even ES six Phil dot net. I just wanted to say that well, I'm really working with lots of languages lately, even changing more than three languages in the same same day, like Objective C, Java, PHP. Um, C, C++, uh, JavaScript, Lua, and JavaScript seems to be the most hardest one, most difficult one to yeah. put back because it's kind of completely something different than all of the other of them. And with these changes with ECMAScript, that will also change, and basically it will be easier to switch between the languages because they will be in a similar, more similar paradigm. Right. Uh, well. Uh uh, one, uh, as I say, on the other end, that's true. But um, well, at least for me, I already got used to the limitations of prior JavaScript version. When you want to define a, something that looks more like a class, you actually create a construction fu function. Uh, but it's always a, a bit uh, uh, disturbing because I have to think: Oh, if I want to declare this. Variable as a private variable of this class. How do I use it? Oh, if I use var, it becomes a variable. Just this scope, so probably it's shared among all the objects, and exactly. uh, that's a bit annoying, really. But uh, tell you the truth, I sort of got used to it. But uh, I totally understand that, uh, like you mentioned, uh, when people who are using many languages, if you have to switch to JavaScript, uh, it, it sort of feels like a pain, <laughs> like going back. <laughs> now I'm going to limited programming. Uh, OK, that's just one detail. Now moving on to with the, 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 the podcast, I want to talk about a very simple but uh, fun and interesting library that tries to implement menus uh, uh, on uh, web pages, but um, uh, usually menus may have more items that they fit on the screen, so they added a sort of more button that when you click on it, let me, let me give the font here. When you click on it, appear the remaining items that uh, that uh, did not fit. And uh, if you increase the font here, less and less items fit, then you click on it and uh, <laughs> the items do not fit on the screen <laughs> again. But OK, it's, uh, it's a fair attempt to make pages more responsive. They adjust better to limitations of resolutions of different screens. Um, I was actually trying to see if there was a, a, a way to, to control the layout, because these menus are just horizontal. But uh, I did not find a way to do it, at least in the demo. I don't think you can make a vertical. website responsive vertically. Probably not. Because well, yeah. well, probably could check a viewport or something, but mostly maybe it could uh, yeah could create a, a way to to have uh, um, menus that uh, scroll horizontally when they do not fit and they want to have to see the remaining items. Um, okay, so but that's just an idea. And the, the idea is to be very simple. Just to use a. Uh, List item elements uh, here, oh. and uh, that's actually that a quite great idea. Yes, the the only other option I've seen before is a default option in Twitter Bootstrap that either shows you the whole menu or shows you nothing, like you know, like a small button to open more. But this is something in between, like you can always yeah. display the most important ones and. Uh, uh, collapse all, all the others. So yeah, this is yeah. That's a great idea. Right. It, it, well, most important should be the first ones because those are the ones that uh, are kept on screen 
when the remaining do not fit. But okay, this is just a mission. Just uh, this actually very simple to use library. Uh, basically, it's just a one call. Actually, this is a jQuery plugin, which is always curious. It's for me because. Uh, People do not seem to know how to pro program uh, things without uh, jQuery. <laughs> uh, okay, that's a different uh, challenge. And uh, okay, but uh, moving on with the other topics. Uh, now I want to talk about something here that I was trying to make it run. Oh, but damn, it's it got stuck. Really? It's basically. Okay, it's it's loading now for me, and uh, it's it's loading for me. But it sort of stolen the, the mouse pointer. Basically, it is a uh, a port of the game quick. Let me see. Okay, I think we should be seeing it already on my screen. Basically, it's a, a, a port of the game quick, and guess what? They use end scripting. <laughs> <laughs> At least uh, once this month, we have a library that is running um, on end scripting. Do, can you listen to the audio of my of my? No, I don't hear anything. My brother. No. No, it's just me. Because I. In the 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 hard deal is quite no, noisy here, but uh, well, at least here it is it is very very fast. Uh, I'm uh, using Core Core uh, a notebook with a Core i7 uh, processor, so it's very very smooth. And actually, we tried to set up a game to. To work, uh, to uh, actually, both of us could uh, participate, but for some reason uh, we could not, we were not able to set up any server to use it. I mean, uh, we can, we could go, we could go. I think I, I should leave this zone. Yeah. Well, you can see it's pretty smooth, but. Uh, you you actually do not do do not uh, listen to any noises. No. Yeah. I've disabled. Well, it's a shame that we. Yeah, I don't know because uh, it seems that um, uh, th that uh, Chrome, I mean uh, the Hangouts, is not capturing the the audio of, of the machine. But that's great. Um, then you can play and record the podcast. Yeah. No, I mean it's not recording, and it's very noisy here. Well, anyway, I think uh, it's it should be enough to to to, to show that uh, it's working well. I don't know what else you cannot do with JavaScript these days, given that you have M scripting. Oh, I should have not have done that. What did you do? Because it's very noisy here. <laughs> I think I need to switch. Oh, I got shot. Yeah. Well, I guess this is basically it. I'm well, just trying to disable the noises. <laughs> it's still an awesome achievement. How do I disable? You could play something like that in your browser without basically installing anything and downloading took, I don't know, about less than five minutes for yeah. me. So, it's like... Yeah, it actually took, uh, took a lot. Yeah? Really? Yeah. Well, it's to download, so uh, it, uh, I don't know, maybe a minute or so. Well, when I start playing games like in the 80s, we wouldn't mind to wait five minutes for the game to load from a cassette tape. Uh, 
Where is the where do I disable the audio here? In system, I think. Uh, damn. What? System, okay. Sound effects. Oh, it's much better now. <laughs> But you can not totally disable it, can you? I don't know. Uh, oh. I actually didn't, okay. hear, didn't hear anything, so probably I disabled all. Oh, okay. Oh, well, anyway, this is just to, to show what it is, and um, there is and not awesome. much more to say. Well, oh. if you like it, um, this is more like for my son. My son loves first-person <laughs> shooters. Oh, he, li he likes to shoot people in the games. <laughs> I know we've been grumpy with the uh, M scripting, but actually, this is really awesome. Right, yeah, it's it's a great achievement because we we, we can see how, how fast things really are because all these things demand a lot of processing. I don't know if if it is using somehow any uh, OpenGL extensions on the browser. Uh, there is well, a WebGL that probably is used. Yeah, because when Quake was used, I don't, I don't think 3D accelerated cars were available then. I think it's all done in C with CPU, which yes, was quite yeah. awesome. But uh, yeah, but it all it was all, all very pixelated <laughs> by then. It's, uh, it did not have this level of detail, and uh, at least uh, on my screen, and I, I'm uh, part. Of this is a relatively small uh, notebook. Uh, it uses like uh, uh, one thousand nine hundred and twenty by one thousand and eighty pixels, so it's full HD resolution and. Uh, it's a lot of pixels that I'm sure when Quake uh, was launched, there were no uh, PCs with uh, this kind of resolution. Um, so the, the, it, uh, it is working pretty smoothly. And it's just a shame we were not able to play a one-on-one -on -one game so we could shoot each other <laughs> live here for uh, everybody watching. We, we could have forgot about the podcast. <laughs> While playing, uh, right, and the people probably will be bored, not because of the of the game, but because they would not be playing, just watching. Especially the ones although that are I, listening it on audio. Yeah. So although I heard that in countries like Korea, um, uh, ch championships of video games are common, and they, it's like a, a, a popular. Uh, TV shows, and uh, we see huge audiences cheering for the players. Uh, uh, they play all sorts of RPG games. Uh, and and lot, uh, lots of my uh, friends are rewatching the videos from this contest, uh, but actually I can't understand that. But well. Oh, but uh, that's probably because you would rather be a player than uh, somebody that watches. Maybe. No. Right, I, I don't know, but my son, he, he watches a lot of uh, videos just to learn how to uh, how yeah. to go through game phases, but then he prefers to play rather than just watching. It just, it just, just watches for learning, so probably that's what your friends are looking for, uh, 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 trying to learn new tricks, uh, just watching others play. Uh, well, I don't know. Um, that's just me guessing. Well, uh, today we start having a short uh, sh show because we didn't have much topics to comment. I thought actually I picked more topics, but for some reason I'm not able to find them. So let's move on to on one final uh, section of this thing out on which we comment about the Innovation Award winners. Uh, this time we are going to talk about the nominees of December 2013 that were voted on uh, 
January, then in February the results came out. So we are already in March, that's why we are commenting about them. Uh, about these, so there are like three nominees. Um, uh, artists from these, which ones would you like to comment? I will comment about the class JS, which, as we talked uh, uh, a little before that, uh, about the uh, uh, the sixth version of, of, of ECMAScript and making JavaScript a more standardized uh, language, then uh, this is something that uh, adds an interesting support uh, and makes JavaScript closer to Java. Basically, ClassJS allows you to create classes, yeah, and uh, it also supports annotations. Like, you can get uh, the meta objects about the class that you embed in the comment, like uh, uh, content. Yeah, uh, probably the in interesting to actually show some uh, uh, some uh, sample code. Yeah, that you, I don't know if I can zoom. You can see demo. Basically, as you see, mm -hmm. uh, that you can define uh, annotations for for the uh, methods. And uh, oh, this is ECMAScript C. <laughs> no, no <laughs> I, I actually I don't think ECMAScript oh. supports that. Yeah. Uh, and annotations. We, oh, okay. And we can. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I was skimming through the um, code, the source code that uh, provides it and how it's done. Basically, it's a match, it matches the, uh, the the contents of the function and finds the comments and parses the annotations from it. And uh, I, I didn't find that it would provide uh, some functionalities. Like, you know, uh, in JavaScript, uh, basically, if you. Um, Override uh, the method that was not actually in the uh, parent class, then it uh, provides you an error that this method method cannot be overwritten and something overridden or something like that. So uh, this is more informational purpose, not 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 like uh, some error check, yeah. but still it's kind of cool and interesting solution. Well, it can always be interesting. Uh, well, one of the main purposes of uh, things like annotations is to generate code that uh, probably do some over object layer relational mapping, so you can uh, or generate documentation. Uh, have right, that too, and um, uh, it would parse those uh, definitions uh, using some uh, separate tool. And then it would uh, generate code or generate documentation, as you mentioned. Uh, so the presence of that, um, those comments will not affect anything. The functionality it would not be faster or slower. Uh, it just would work uh, and uh, also be helpful for anybody that is browsing the code. It would actually get some insight about what the code is supposed to do. And uh, I think it's great, and um, uh, also found it interesting the, the the possibility to define classes more like we are used to them mm -hmm. in uh, in uh, other languages, and do not have to wait for ECMAScript six for. Is there for any implementation? To be able to use them. Is there any implementation for yeah. annotations in PHP? Do you know? Do you remember any class like that? For PHP, there are some uh, parsers, but they are not exactly built in the language. They are considering it for uh, PHP yeah. 6, but uh, it's one of those things that uh, I don't know if uh, 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 it will be approved. They've been trying to push it for a few years, but uh, the proposals have always been refused. Uh, I'm not sure why, because it's something that is meant for tools uh, that will uh, work separately from the actual code that it will be running. So I don't know, but um, for JavaScript, uh, I also haven't heard uh, if there are any plans to make that a built-in feature of the language, and maybe some of the reflection classes that can provide um, uh, insights 
uh, about the classes extracted from the the, um, the, the, the the annotations. Anyway, the annotations in this case are defined as uh, as, as comments. They are not uh, something that is built in the, the language. Yeah. Um, I think that is the thing that has, that the that at least for PHP they have been opposed to make it part of this language syntax uh, because it's always metadata and uh, you, you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't need it at runtime. But uh, well, the same goes for JavaScript or any other language. So I don't know if um, all these things would be really uh, this important to have built in the language. I personally, I do not see a use case for that, but maybe some other people have uh, found it uh, interesting. And uh, okay, and um, on my part, I also would like to comment about a couple of classes. Let me share the screen here. Um, okay, we have. Uh, let me disable this here. Because I was listening to some background noises, I don't know if you were, if you were listening, no. and they were caused about by the 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 frame the the, the window that was running quick. Still. Yeah, just still playing while um, while chatting. Yeah, exactly. So uh, now talking about this this um, these packages, there is one called jQuery HTML5 WebSocket or Ajax Shed. Which is basically a jQuery uh, plugin that allows you to implement a chat uh, using uh, WebSockets if your browser supports it or AJAX requests. And this uh, this was quite interesting because we don't see yet many um, solutions to, that take advantage of WebSockets to do some bi bidirectional communication. And uh, in the case of chat applications, that's probably one of the, the, the most adequate uh, uh, applications for using uh, web sockets because chat tends to be very interactive. So you can uh, send the messages that the current user is sending, also receive any messages that the other users are typing at the same time. So this uh, package here by by somebody that calls himself PLS, CIS, PLP, whatever that means, probably it's a code. I don't think this can be a real name, but uh, it's somebody from India. Uh, nevertheless, this is a great package, and congratulations for, for, for the developer for having sent this package. Also, uh, by the way, we didn't mention the, the previous package, yeah. the class.js, it was mentioned and developed yeah. by uh, Raphael. Uh, I'm trying to. No, Raphael. Raphael Lucio, Lucio, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from Brazil, and this one, as I mentioned, by this uh, guy with a complicated uh, nickname from India. Uh, so I found it this interesting. Have you ever tried to use web sockets in in, in any of your applications? Uh, or I remember when HTML5 Buzz was only starting, there was some kind of incident then that Chrome implemented WebSockets and then changed its specification a the API and then changed it again. So I actually, because probably of that, I never started trying them out. It, it was changing so quickly. Yeah. Probably now it's more standardized, so maybe it's time to try right. them. Right. Uh, well, I think it's part of the HTML. Uh, specifications. A year, he not only to uses uh, web sockets, but also uh, what is called no, no uh, server sent events. Mm -hmm. Things that are sent by the server to let the browser be aware of something that goes on in the server. So it's quite interesting. So the other package that I wanted to mention also is a, a jQuery plugin that seems to be very simple but addresses a problem. I thought this could be addressed with CSS, regular CSS, but then maybe not. Actually, never tried it, so I'm not sure. 
which is the ability to style uh, uh, the different images of uh, uh, a checkbox in its different states, like uh, uh, checked, unchecked, enabled, and disabled. And um, well, if uh, this plugin was developed for that purpose, it's probably because it's not possible and it's still uncertain. Uncertain. Uh, so uh, I. Uh, I think it's useful that this package sort of implements th this this, um, this this solution to style the images of uh, checkboxes. So uh, congratulations for the, the author Sandro Alves Perez from Brazil. And uh, with this, uh, we practically conclude uh, our coverage of. Uh, the the um, the innovation award winners in this case of December 2013, and uh, this time I wanted to start commenting about something that already exists since a while ago, but I I, I usually never comment about it, which is the the, the award winners ranking, not just by author but also by country. Uh, previously, you actually interview. Of the winners of the Innovation Award uh, 2013, including Arthur Zier, and uh, there is a separate show talking about uh, the, the work that each one did. There were there were three winners: from Joseph Bruno from Austria, Jonathan Gorky from France, and Arthur Sossin from Latvia. But uh, we didn't comment much about the actual award winners. Ranking by country, and uh, uh, as you may see on the screen, there is basically uh, uh, a ranking that shows that uh, Romania uh, was the the winner of 2013 with six packages. Actually, uh, five of them were uh, developed, uh, nominated for uh, an author called Martlo. Yeah. And uh, that was the, the, the probably, uh, actually, the, the, the one that contributed with more points to make Romania the winner of 2014. And, uh, well, in 2000, I mean 2013. Well, in 2013, uh, there, is, there is not yet, yet an explicit uh, championship by countries like uh, uh, like there is a little start to be happening in 2014, and uh, uh, the as I mentioned in the previous show, the the country that accumulates more points will be the winner. I mean, by the end of the year, will be the winner of the award, and there will be a special prize. Uh, for now, it will be still the PHP elephant, but maybe. I don't know if something will happen between now and a year. And, uh, uh, there will be somebody creating a mascot for JavaScript, like there is for PHP, that you can give away as a plush toy, which you, for now will be the prize that will be sent to the winners. So the, all the nominees that uh, win, that the um, uh, the, the winning country will earn that prize, and uh, something else that I'm, 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 I'm uh, working on, and it will be a sort of a small surprise, nothing, nothing uh, special, but just to make it uh, different for each of the, the winners, and uh, that that uh, that uh, will be the the the, the prize that uh, they will get. Other than Romanian, uh, at least uh, in 2013, several other countries uh, also ranked uh, relatively high, like France with four packages. I'm sure three of them were from Jonathan Gotti, and uh, there's another one that uh, is, does not appear in the top ten. And then there is also Brazil with six packages, uh, Austria with two. In this case, we are sure that they were from um, from Joseph Brunner, and luckily we three, and we are also sure that those are from Arthur Sossin. Uh, 
And then there are other countries that uh, also scored high, but not high enough to, to be the first, like Armenia, India, United Kingdom, United States, and Spain. So starting uh, next month, we will be commenting on the winners of the Innovation Award, not just by author, but also by country. And the, the idea is to uh, encourage uh, developers not only to participate, but also um, motivate their colleagues from their own countries to also submit uh, innovative packages, and uh, everybody benefits from a greater participation, uh, because um, uh, if uh, more people submit more innovative packages, it will be useful. And, uh, and there will be more value in the site to share with uh, others. And uh, hopefully, uh, the, the, the developers that bring more colleagues from their countries to participate will uh, have a greater chance to be the, the, the ones from the country that win the Innovation Award. I don't know. I, uh, I don't know how if. This, how, how well this works to motivate more people to send innovative packages, but uh, starting next month we will start evaluating what will be the results, if there is something that you can notice there are more, uh, more people from the, the same countries participating. Uh, I don't know, what, what do you think about this? Do you think this will work to motivate more developers? Or, or well. Uh, the, the most difficult part with the motivation is if you see someone is way ahead of you then uh, you may not really want to try to pursue them and, and, and uh, beat them but uh, if you look yeah. at, the, at the results uh, of the 2013 year then you can see that uh, uh, none of the Romanian users uh, of the Romanian participants are in the first place, but uh, Romania as a country won. So it's uh, basically different kind of competition. And uh, yeah, if there is one uh, more active developer in country, it does not mean much without uh, the other contestants from same country. So uh, I think it uh, should be more motivating in uh, that that case that maybe united as a country, you can achieve more than you could alone. Exactly. It's uh, a greater purpose for the sake of, of your country. It would be something very <laughs> patriotic. <laughs> and, uh, and that's true, actually. It's great that you notice that uh, uh, quite some, some authors did not win individually. They, they were able to contribute for their countries to to rank better and um, ultimately they would also win not just the prizes but also the eventual exposure and the reputation that they will get. Uh, 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 I, I was told that at least some authors actually present the, the, the nominations uh, in the Innovation Award both in JS classes and PHP classes as their as an item in their resumes. And well, that uh, helps them to get better jobs is great because um, it's well deserved. It's, it was not something that was granted to without merit. So I hope uh, everybody is benefiting from participating in this initiative. And I also hope it's fun to, to, to participate in a sort of competition. Even if you are uh, collaborating and competing with your colleagues of your own countries. Okay, uh, well, with this, basically, we have ended this podcast. I uh, just would like to end up uh, thanking Artus again for coming uh, again and helping to make this end up more interesting with your insights. There is one more thing I would uh, like to mention that uh, I think... There's one more thing. <laughs> yeah. I, the, I, the, the last guy that was famous for saying those words is... Unfortunately, that. Okay. There's one more thing. <laughs> okay. I hope nothing bad happens to you after this. Uh, uh, basically, okay. the last time I think I've, I've mentioned uh, that 
uh, that would be great to have a JavaScript mascot and that people should come up with some ideas. Uh, months have passed, still no ideas, no suggestions. And I'm starting to lower yeah. my expectations and maybe we could come up with an ECMAScript mascot, for example. That would be a part well, of the JavaScript. I don't know. Well, well. I don't know, because it seems that these mascots initiatives are usually ideas of one individual that happens to be talented in uh, designing uh, graphics. Like, for instance, Vincent Pontier from France, which is the, the original creator of the PHP elephant. Uh, I don't know about the Linux penguin or the uh, MySQL dolphin, uh, but uh, in this, in this case of the PHP, it was an, issue, an idea of one individual. Well, maybe I uh, should start thinking. Well, I'm not uh, uh, talented as a graphic uh, uh, designer. That's certainly not my uh, best qualification, not at all. Uh, but maybe if, maybe if we can talk with, uh, with uh, some graphic designer that's somehow uh, interested with uh, with JavaScript, you can uh, you can uh, actually be motivated to create uh, a mascot that gets some uh, uh, adherence. And uh, even if you cannot make a, a mascot that uh, is accepted as a JavaScript mascot, like maybe you can make it a JS classes mascot. So <laughs> probably it will be alright too. Okay, uh, well, with this, we practically end the, the podcast. Uh, thank you again, Artists, for coming. On my behalf, that's all for now. Bye. Bye.